today. So I'm going to talk about uh, the web audio, uh, web assembly audio worklet C sound. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, a little bit about the current C sound ecosystem uh, and our previous work on C sound on the web. Uh, then I'll be going into the uh, particularly the, the web assembly audio worklet version of C sound that we're using today. Uh, I will show some demonstrations and then uh, discuss some of the issues that came up in working with WebAssembly and Audio Worklet and then get to some conclusions. So the C-Sound ecosystem. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows C-Sound is a sound and music computing system that is uh, fully programmable via its domain-specific language. It's been around since 1986 and derives from computer music software from even earlier. Uh, the C sound ecosystem today has its, at its center uh, the primary C sound library, libc sound, uh, which has a C and a C++ API. It has been ported to a variety of platforms from embedded to mobile to desktop to supercomputers. So we are able to run C sound on a Bella platform, uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, iOS, Android, uh, Windows, OS X, Linux. Uh, and so on. And since 2014, uh, it has also been present on the web platform. Uh, the first iteration of C sound using web technologies uh, was presented in two versions at the first web audio conference in 2015. Uh, the first version was a pinnacle or portable native client C sound. Uh, this was not using open web standards, it was using the uh, Google-specific uh, uh, Pepper API, and we were using that to um, uh, communicate to the uh, sound card. And it, with uh, Portable Native Client, you would use your C and C++ code, compile it to a Portable Native Client module, load that, and then run it in the browser. The other version we showed at the time was Web Audio C Sound, which consisted of uh, C sound, C code compiled with mscripten into asm.js, uh, then using that code being driven by a script processor node. Uh, the web audio version uh, was based on a wrapper class called C sound obj, which provided a mediated, mediated access to the underlying lib C sound, uh, which was living in the web assembly, or sorry, uh, asm.js uh, space. Now, with the demise of a portable native client that's gone away, uh, we con concentrated our development on the web audio version of C sound. Now, around the time that Pinnacle went away, WebAssembly became available as a target for the mscripten compiler, and a WASM version of libc sound was developed uh, pretty easily by retargeting our uh, build scripts to target uh, WebAssembly instead of asm.js, uh, and this was uh, still used with the script processor note. And now today we have a WebAssembly plus audio worklet C sound. Uh, with the introduction of audio worklet in the Chrome browser, uh, we developed a new version of Web Audio C sound. Uh, we also took it as an opportunity to refactor a little bit of our code. Uh, we now have a kind of front end C sound obj API and we have our node APIs in the back. Uh, and now we've, we've sort of separated out the two node implementations for script processor node and audio worklet. And we have now uh, focused only on WebAssembly and dropped use of asm.js, largely because we found that WebAssembly now runs on all of the target platforms we were looking at, uh, iOS, Android, uh, desktop browsers. Now, in, with our new Web Audio C sound system, the selection of the implementation uh, is determined by the presence of Audio Worklet. Uh, in browsers that, that do not support Audio Worklet, we fall back to script processor note. Uh, and just a, a kind of brief uh, look, these are the kind of class names for our, our, um, our API. C sound obj is that first primary client API for uh, Web Audio C sound. Uh, it, it handles creating which node for you. Uh, it handles uh, communicating and controlling those nodes. It's a pretty thin front end now uh, to the two implementations, C sound node, which extends audio worklet node, which is a front end to C sound processor, which is uh, actually doing, using the WebAssembly 
libc sound to process audio input and generate output uh, in the web audio thread. The C sound script processor node is a script processor node that uses the same WebAssembly libc sound, but in the main thread. Now, the, the reason I wanted to point this out is um, uh, you can come to C sound, web audio C sound, uh, either as I'm going to use C sound as a library for making my music project, or now because we've separated it pretty cleanly, you can think of it as I want to use C sound to implement a node within a larger web audio graph. All right. So there's kind of two paths now for, um, and use cases for, for C sound. Uh, the version of Web Audio C Sound has been tested on a variety of platforms with different browsers, uh, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Safari, uh, and different uh, operating systems and hardware, Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, desktop, and mobile. Uh, support for audio worklet uh, is only available now in Chrome and Chromium, uh, and that's where most of our testing for audio worklet has been. So uh, just some demonstrations. This is one from the paper, uh, Glowing Orbs. Uh, a pretty simple example. It's uh, using p5.js for the animation, uh, and the audio is being rendered by C sound uh, in an audio worklet. Now, as an example, it's uh, perhaps not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's OK. Uh, but does do quite a bit of drawing and code for drawing uh, in the canvas. Right. And uh, for us, I'll just close that for a moment. Uh, we were using this uh, at the time as a test for uh, making sure that the audio didn't interrupt the, the visuals and the visuals didn't interrupt the audio. And also uh, specifically testing it on Android. So uh, at the time, Chrome 65 was out. Chrome 66 was the, the test version. Uh, and I found that um, uh, you could tell a real big difference between trying to run script processor node with WebAssembly uh, in Chrome, script processor node with WebAssembly in Firefox, versus um, uh, audio worklet and uh, WebAssembly. Uh, the animation was very smooth in Chrome versus uh, with audio worklets versus the other two. Yeah, so this is uh, live.csound.com. It is a uh, uh, web application uh, that allows you, uh, has C sound coding exposed to the user, uh, and you can use this for live coding uh, C sound code. Um, I will just show uh, a brief little example. I'm going to evaluate the test code and then do some modifications. <laughs> So, oh, thank you. Uh, this is, uh, uh, is live and available online. Uh, and for us, it was a kind of nice test to make sure that we could be doing the kinds of things that we do uh, with C sound on a desktop, namely live coding, uh, in a browser. Uh, and it became a nice way uh, as uh, a nice way to introduce people to C sound. Uh, they don't have to install anything. They just go and run this browser, uh, web page, get to it. Uh, it does run uh, in script with uh, browsers with script processor node. Uh, and it is also a progressive web application. So uh, you can uh, say, 
load this up on an Android browser and say add to desktop, it will then run offline uh, uh, on your phone, even if you're you know out and about. Um, yeah. Uh, overall, the you may have heard a click or two, and I'll talk about that uh, in a bit. But overall, the performance we found has been pretty good. This one is uh, using live processing. Hopefully, it uh, won't blow up. So uh, the interesting thing for me with that example is uh, trying to think about using, uh, making web applications for music, for live performance, uh, maybe kind of bespoke uh, uh, interactive uh, performance interface. Uh, in that case too, um, uh, maybe just showing a little bit of why uh, some, some nice things about opting to use C-Sound in this case. Uh, the code uh, was not, overly big for the reverb. Uh, what the effect was, was a reverb being pitch shifted with uh, uh, two FFTs, one for each, each channel, uh, up a fifth, and then being fed back into itself with a, a delay. Um, the code uh, is not too bad. Um, I, I, I sort of liken this um, process of writing code in C sound and then using it from JavaScript uh, as being similar to writing shader code uh, in GLSL and then using that and interacting with it from JavaScript with WebGL. Uh, this also runs uh, in the browser on my Motorola G4 Android phone. Now, uh, if anyone's interested to see what the API looks like, uh, real briefly, um, when you use uh, Web Audio C Sound, you just have to import scripts first, uh, and then uh, create an instance of C Sound obj. Uh, use that to, uh, if you want to enable audio input, you do this. Uh, say what C Sound code to compile, and then run start. And afterwards, you can use methods like read score or set channel or uh, compile orchestra uh, to send code over to C sound to uh, execute. Uh, some issues that came up. Uh, one, okay, uh, audio computing interruptions. I think this was much worse in uh, Chrome 66 when uh, audio work list first dropped. Um, there were some discussions on the uh, web audio Slack and talking with the Chrome team, filing bugs. Uh, the, one of the theories uh, I had was uh, um, looking at maybe garbage collector. Um, and still not certain exactly, but um, one of the test uh, cases that we filed uh, did end up showing that the garbage collector in the main thread, if a garbage collection happened, could actually interfere with the uh, audio worklet thread through a contended lock. Uh, that was mostly addressed by a garbage collection engineer, uh, and that improved greatly the uh, issues with uh, dropouts. Uh, but still, you can hear sometimes, once in a while, um, a dropout. And uh, you know, the other question is, maybe it's a thread priority issue. These are things I think are um, still being resolved for audio worklets. Um, in terms of the WebAssembly deployment. Uh, in the paper, it talks about this a little bit. 
there's a kind of tricky problem when you're trying to support script processor node and uh, audio worklet. Um, if you are loading and compiling the WebAssembly binary, you have to do it synchronously if you're running it in, uh, compiling it in the audio worklet. If you try to run a script processor node on a, on a web browser, uh, on a phone, uh, let's say Firefox, and you try to load, load that synchronously, it will fail. So you have to have an async version. You need to have both versions pretty much available if you're gonna try to support both script processor and uh, audio worklet. Now this was the case when we were looking at this uh, uh, earlier this year. Uh, maybe things have changed. But uh, because of this issue with having to deal with synchronous and asynchronous uh, WebAssembly, um, it made the, we had to package both versions uh, with our project. Uh, also, we found that trying to set up our project to work with web development tools uh, like, uh, like uh, NPM or Webpack uh, was a little bit tricky to figure out what we do with all of the resources. Uh, still an open question for us uh, in our community to figure out. Uh, and just quick, quick conclusions. Uh, overall, using WebAssembly and Audio Worklets, pretty efficient. Uh, we're pretty excited by the results. Um, and having the fallback to script processor node uh, it just gets you that coverage for the state of web audio today. Um, things have improved, but I think there's still, uh, still a few open questions left with the, uh, the performance that uh, need to get worked on. Uh, special thanks to uh, Yari Klaimola, Klaimola uh, Stefan Letz, Henri Manson, and Hong Chan Choi for their uh, discussions and con contributions to this work. Thank you. We have a couple of questions on Slack, Stephen, if that's okay with yeah. you. Yeah, please. Uh, in some of your demos, you were syncing audio and visual and using P5 for the visuals. Um, Could you talk a little bit about how you do the synchronization between the audio that and That one visual? wasn't to sync. It was more uh, because the visual wasn't so uh, important to be in sync. Uh, the one I did with the live processing, uh, I sort of just calculated the amount of time and duration that would correspond. And I scheduled on both the C sound thread and the um, my animation thread, uh, rough guess. And it lines up okay. And for, for that project, it's all right. For tight syncing, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, it's, that's an open question from, for me personally too, yeah. Okay. Um, what were some of the performance trade-offs between the standard implementation of C sound and C sound with web audio and WASM? And did you notice any overall differences in fidelity between the versions that you've got running? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, WebAssembly is slower, but it, it is remarkably, it's all relative, I suppose. Like, what, what do you expect out of, out of a browser, right? And it, like, WebAssembly is pretty, pretty fast. Like, we usually found about 50%, maybe a little bit less, but we would guess and estimate about 50% of the performance of native. Yeah. The native C version of yeah. CSAN. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's how, that's what I remember. So. But I guess perhaps we need to do more testing, but that, that's what I remember as being like in my head, the, the kind of target number. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And Chris has got a question about whether or not you could load the WebAssembly asynchronously inside the audio worklet processor. No, uh, you can't do anything asynchronous in the audio worklet processor. Uh, I asked about using fetch on one of the issues. It was uh, shot down as being uh, unsafe. I get it, it's okay. So, uh, you know, I would have preferred to, to allow myself to shoot myself in the foot and just handle that uh, during initialization of the processor, but that's fine. Uh, so you can't, you can't do fetch, you can't do uh, XML HTTP request, you can't do async loading for, um, and compilation for the um, WebAssembly. Right. Yeah. Oh, Paul says last he checked, it's possible to do it. Oh, I mean, he but then maybe I am, was the last point? you checked five minutes ago when you implemented it? Because that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Catch it with Stephen afterwards. Great. Yeah. Thanks Thank very you. much, Stephen.